Hello and welcome to this first lesson in the computer systems uh, unit of work. Uh, this unit is all about computer systems and how computers actually work. Uh, but before we look at that, it's probably important to consider what is a computer system. So I'd like you to pause the video at this point and have a quick look online. I'd like you to answer the two questions shown on your screen. What does the term computer system mean? And then can you think or come up with any examples? You can use the internet to help you, the person next to you if there is one, and possibly any work you did last year. So as I said, this is lesson one uh, of unit two computer systems, and this uh, unit is aimed at year seven students. In this video, we're going to have a look at what the term computer system means. We're going to be able to name a number of different computer systems, and then you're going to be able to identify and categorize a number of input and output devices which computer systems use. So a computer system is any device that does the following three things. It is something that can input data from a user, so it can take in some form of data from a human being. It then does some kind of processing or some kind of automated task with that data and it outputs information. And those are the three key things that make a computer a computer. So, for example, I'm sat now talking into my microphone. That is data input. That's data going into my laptop. My laptop is then processing my voice and saving that voice into a PowerPoint slide that you can then watch as a video. The output is then that video at the end. It's that my voice coming out of your computer uh, into your ears. So my laptop is clearly a computer system in that it does those three things. My PlayStation is also a computer system. I can press the X button on my controller. The computer or the PlayStation then works out, well, what does an X mean? And the output is then my player on FIFA passing the ball. So anything that does those three things of input, process, output, is what we would call a computer system. So here you can see a number of different examples of how that input, process and output cycle works. On the input side, we've got things like a scanner, a camera, a mouse and a keyboard. A scanner can put uh, documents into a computer. A camera can put pictures into a computer. A keyboard can take in letters and a mouse can take in movement. Our computer is then in the middle and it processes that information. And then we've got various different output devices like, for example, a printer, speakers and a monitor. A printer can print out a document or a picture. Speakers can output a voice or different sounds and a monitor can display various different things onto your screen for you to look at. So you can begin to see how that idea of input, process and output is used in lots of different computer systems. So I'd like you to pause the video at this point and do the following three things. I'd like you to define the term computer system in your book and you can flick back through this video if you need. I'd then like you to draw out the input, process and output diagram from slide four using a pencil and then to colour code each section. Finally, I'd like you to explain what happens in each section of the diagram underneath in pen. Pause the video at this point and in a couple of seconds the answer will come up on your screen. So here is the sort of thing that you should have come up with. A computer system is a system which takes in data from a user, processes it in some way and then outputs it. And the diagram should have looked something like the one shown on your screen. You've got data on one side, data going in, you've got processing in the middle and then useful information coming out of the other slide. If yours doesn't look quite like that, pause it at this point and update yours so that it does. So now that we understand what a computer system is, we can begin to think about the different types of computer system that we might have come across. Now remember, a computer system is anything that takes in data, processes it, and outputs useful information. I'd like you to draw the middle of a mind map in a little bubble, and in that I'd like you to write types of computer system. You're then going to want five or six different lines coming off of your mind map. Pause the video at this point, leave yourself a couple of lines and then draw the centre bubble of a mind map uh, saying types of computer system. 
So I'd then like you by yourself to add as many different computer systems as you can. Now if we were doing this in school, you'd then share your ideas and add those in green and finally add my ideas in red. So instead, if you're doing this at home, I'd like you to put the ideas that you come up with in one colour, ideas from the internet in another colour, and then on the next slide, add my ideas in red. So pause the video at this point, and I'd like you to draw a mind map of as many different types of computer system as you can. Now again, the answers are coming up on the next slide, so don't panic too much if you're struggling, but pause the video at this point and give that a go. So here are the different types of computer system I could come up with. A laptop, a PDA, a desktop computer, a server, a mainframe, a netbook, a smartphone, a games console, and a multimedia center. So you could have had things like a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox. Those definitely class as computer systems. You might have had things like an iPhone or an Android smartphone. Those definitely count as a computer system. A laptop or a mini netbook like the ones we use in school. A Chromebook, any other form of laptop at all. Or sort of a desktop tower type computer. So pause the video at this point and add any that you didn't get in red. So we now know that a computer system requires some way of data being input and some way of information being output. Just think to yourself quickly, how do we get data into a desktop computer? How do we get data into a smartphone? And how do we get data into a games console? And then the same for output. How do I get information out of my desktop tower? How do I get information out of my smartphone? And how do I get information out of my uh, PlayStation or other games console? Just think about those in your head for the time being. And a final activity for today. I'd like you to draw the following table in your book, taking up the rest of the page. So we just need two columns. One that says input devices and one that says output devices. And that can take up whatever you've got left on that page, hopefully about a third of the page or so. Pause the video, draw in that table and then move on to the next slide. So I'd now like you to find as many input and output devices as you can uh, on the internet and either copy and paste those into your work if you're doing your work on the computer or draw those into your page if you're doing those in your book. I'd like you to draw them into the correct column. So if you think they're an input device, draw them in the input column. And if you think they're an output device, draw them in the output column. Now you may find there are a couple of devices that fit in both. If you find any devices that you think are input and output devices, you can draw those on the line down the middle or you can draw them in both columns. We're aiming for about four in input, four in output, and maybe one that you think is both. You can use the internet for this to do some research. Uh, and like I say, either copy and paste pictures of the devices into your work if you're doing it on the computer, or draw those in with a pencil if you're doing this in your book. So here's what I came up with. A mouse is definitely an input device. A keyboard is definitely an input device. And a controller for a games console is definitely an input device. Those are ways of us as uh, human beings getting data into our computer. I've then got speakers, a printer, and a monitor in my output device column. Those things are definitely output devices. In the middle, I've got a touch screen. Now, a touch screen is an input device because you can touch it and touch different applications, but it's also an output device because you can see things come up on the screen. So a touch screen phone would be both. Pause the video at this point if you've got any of those wrong and correct them as needed. So just a quick little quiz to finish off. Hopefully you are able to name me five input devices, four output devices, and three types of computer system. Before we finish today, pause the video and see, can you name me five inputs, four output, and three different types of computer system? So that's the end of this first video in our computer systems unit of work. Hopefully you now understand what a computer system means. Hopefully you can name a number of different examples of computer systems 
and you're able to identify input and output devices and categorize those as needed. Now, if you're not sure on any of those bits, uh, go back through the video, have another look at any of those slides. And if not, you can drop a comment below or to your teacher via Google Classroom. Thank you very much for watching.